This is PhotoP. To get your image into PhotoP, just drag your image in here. It's, it's a lot like Photoshop. If you have Photoshop, great. If not, you can follow along using PhotoP.com. I need to create a grayscale image, which will be a map that has black as the background, white elements in the foreground, and gray going towards the background. I'm going to do a simple one first, which just carves through the foreground elements, denotes them as white, and then put a gray stroke around them. So this way they blend back into the background a little better. I'm going to create a new layer off to the right side, clicking the new layer icon. I'll call this my foreground layer, FG. And I'm going to use this tool, which is the polygon lasso tool, to just lasso and make a selection of these foreground elements. With that tool being selected, I'm going to click on the top of the rock pile and just work my way down as quick as I can Try to get some details in there. Maybe if you want this rock, you could include it now, or we could go back and paint it gray. So this way it shifts a little bit differently than the rest of the image. Going around this grouping. And that grouping, and going up the side of this wall. And to the top cornering it off over here, so I reach this corner, going down to this corner, going across, and going up. From my color swatch, I'm going to make sure white is selected and press OK. And with this layer selected in the foreground, I'm going to find a paint bucket. The paint bucket lives under the gradient tool, and the gradient tool is another wonderful way to do this, going from white to grayscale. Right now, I'm going to use the paint bucket. With the paint bucket selected, I'm going to click in my selection and fill it in. I'll get rid of these harder edges in my second pass on this. Now I'm going to do a background, create a new layer. I'm going to drag that new layer beneath my current layer. I'm going to name that new layer BG for background. I'm going to select the background layer. I'm going to pick black as my color and click OK. I'm going to deselect my selection by pressing Control D. And then I'll just click in this empty area. If I turn off my foreground, you can see it's total black mask. Here is the background. I'm going to decrease the opacity of the background and decrease the opacity of the foreground. So I can take a look at any other elements that I might want to include. Let me decrease this a little more. As I mentioned, I might want to include this rock cropping out here. I'm going to pick up a grayscale brush. White is 100%, so I'll do a little gray down here. Next, I'm going to use the paintbrush tool, selecting it. This is your paintbrush size. I'll make it smaller. And then in this area, I'll work on the black background, BG, so I'll select that. I'll just paint some gray. And this will give the illusion of moving at a slightly different speed than the rest of the layers. If I increase the background, you can see that gray. I might want to go a little lighter on this gray now. So I'll select my gray again, and I'll move up a little in the spectrum over here. And now I'll paint some more gray out on it. But this time it's a lighter gray. I might do that one more time. Getting very close to white here. I'm clicking OK. Next, I wanted to smooth out this hard white edge meeting the black. I'm going to go up to this layer. I'm going to select just the white pixel so I don't leak out of this mask. And the way you do that is by going under the magic wand tool. With this layer selected, clicking on the white area, and that selects just the white color. I'm still holding a gray. I'll pick up my brush again. Maybe I'll increase the brush size. Since I have the layer selected with a mask, I could stroke on this layer. I'm going to pick a darker color. You can see where 
it is working, but that's much too thick compared to this color. So I'll undo. I'll go a little lighter on the gray and I'll change the opacity to be less so I could do multiple strokes and then I'll repeat what I just did. If it's too light, I could re-increase the opacity or I could just keep on stroking on that layer. And the goal is to blend this in kind of meet the values over here. And this will give dimension to the image. Maybe I'll go a little closer to the edge this time. And after this, I'll use the smudge tool to blend this all in together. Maybe I'll go a little lighter on the opacity again. And I'll come out a little bit might be hard to see on the screen, but it is adding a little. Each time we stroke it. Now I'll go to Smudge Tool, because I want to kind of blend things in together. I'll decrease the smudge amount, but I will increase the brush size. Let me decrease the size a little bit. So I'm just mixing up the edge. Another way to go about this would have been to do a feathering around the edge as well. So this is creating some of that sharper debris dimension. Before I export this image, I might want to put a little gradient going on in the background to blend it more in. So I'll turn off my top layer. Fortunately, I put my rock on this layer. It's not going to be a big deal. Maybe I'll do a selection of everything that's black by using the magic wand tool on this layer. Picking the gradient tool which lives underneath here. Picking the type of gradient, this seems fine, and dragging out my gradient starting at black going forward. Maybe starting around here. That's nice. It's nice and soft. I'll turn on my foreground image and undo. I think I have to go a little further back. So I'll start over here. And that looks nice and soft. I'll turn this back on foreground. And so now we have this fading into the background, which will be stable in the image. I'll export this as a mask. File, export as PNG. And when I click on save, it, it downloads. And now I'll import it into After Effects. In After Effects, I already placed the image. This is the mask, which I'll put right above the image. And then I'll turn off its visibility. On the image layer, I'll put a displacement map as an effect. For the displacement map layer, I'll select the mask 3. And you already see it pops a bit. For the use for horizontal displacement, it's asking what in this map color-wise to use. I'll pick luminance since we did a black and white mask. And then we could see it animate by just shifting it over. At frame zero, I'll move it over. And there are limits. If you go too far with this technique, you're going to see this stretchy of pixels. So you can't go too far. But if you go reasonably a distance like this, here I am at negative 20. And I'll put a keyframe there. 
and then I'll go to frame 60 or maybe frame 90 make it slower and I'll go to positive 20 I'll hit the end key to shorten my timeline let's see what we got If you wanted this to go horizontal instead of vertigo, you can also use luminance for the vertical displacement and you could have played with that as well. So going back to frame zero, let's say we start out a little lower like this. I'll put a keyframe there and I'll also go to frame 90 three seconds later and I'll just lower this now we have both horizontal and vertical going at the same time then you could choose one for the leakage of the black because we run out of the image and so you see black off to the side seen through the canvas always start with a bigger image than you need here since we don't have a bigger image Select both layers and then pre-comp it. Final 3D. And out here, scale it bigger than the canvas. See if anything leaks. Nope, that's it. Selecting here, hitting the tilde key. And you can play it like that. 